Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Pro Car Studio. My name is Rudy. And today we're gonna to be installing a Surimoto rear sway bar on our 10th gen EX Turbo. The installation should be pretty straightforward, especially considering that you'll get some new brackets, bushings, and some grease. So it's a pretty much a drop-in kit. It's a matter of just removing the old factory sway bar, which I believe measures about 16, 17 millimeters, depending on the trim level. Uh, this is upgraded to a 20 millimeter piece. So it's a lot stiffer. And in addition to that, it is adjustable. There's two holes here. Uh, one is a, a softer setting towards the outer end, harder setting towards the, the inner end. And uh, that'll allow you to tune it, whether you'd be at the track or maybe for a daily driver if you want it for a softer setting. But let's go ahead and get right, right into it and show you how to install this rear sway bar. Having securely raised the vehicle to give us access to that rear sway bar, we'll begin by removing the end links on both the passenger and driver side using a 12 millimeter socket at the bottom of the end link and a 14 millimeter socket or wrench at the upper stud of the end link. Now we'll go ahead and remove the sway bar brackets holding the sway bar to the subframe using a 12 millimeter socket and a small extension taking off two bolts on each bracket. Now that the sway bar has been unbolted from the car, you can go ahead and wiggle it out. In most cases, you can get it out without having to disconnect any of the exhaust system, but it could vary depending on the trim level of the vehicle. Now we can go ahead and prep our sway bar for installation. Uh, really, the only thing we need to do in this case is lubricate the polyurethane bushings. Use some of the su supplied grease, but you can also use some good quality Teflon tape Wrap it around the areas where the bushing is gonna be located. Uh, for our case though, uh, usually for more racy applications, uh, you wanna use the supplied grease. It's a little bit more durable under high stress and loads. Now we can drop our sway bar in place, making sure that it's oriented in the correct position. Now we can install our sway bar brackets torquing the bolts down to about 25 to 30 foot pounds. Before reinstalling the sway bar end links, make sure to check for proper articulation of the sway bar. Now we can install both end links and torque the hardware to factory specs. In this case, the nut gets torqued to about 40 foot pounds and the bolt to about 25 to 30 foot pounds. For added security, you can certainly use some uh, blue or maybe a little bit of red Loctite to prevent the bolts from coming loose. But in addition to that, if the sway bar end link stud is spinning on you, use a five millimeter hex key to hold the stud in place and a wrench to tighten down the nut. So that'll basically do it for the installation of the Surimoto rear sway bar on our 10th gen Civic project car. Again, this is a great upgrade for beginners. It's, as you can see, pretty simple to do. Maybe takes about an hour or two, depending on your experience, but it'll add some great performance. Not only is it stiffer than the uh, factory rear sway bar, it's also adjustable. So whether you're barely starting off, you know, hitting your local autocross, maybe car uh, carving up some canyons, or if you're actually putting some slicks on the car, I think this will help you out a great deal. So once again, my name is Rudy from Pro Car Studio. Check this product out on our website, www.procivic.com. Let us know if you have any questions or comments down below. Make sure to subscribe for more updates like this and more install videos, and I'll see you next time.